Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm covering a game that I've sort of covered in the past. This is Root with the Clockwork Expansion, which allows it to be played solo and cooperatively. And the reason I'm covering this is because I did all of my top of 2020 lists at the end of the year, but uh, I totally forgot that the Clockwork Expansion technically released in 2020. So let's do another play of it with the official rules, because the play I did about a year back was with that PNP version. Although, <laughs> it's funny, I say official, but they already have Arata for the Electric Irie, one of the factions we're going to have. And then I printed out the newest version from the Better Bot Project of the Vagabot, another faction we're going to have. But no worries, let's kind of give an overview of what we got here, and then we'll jump into playing, but I'm going to explain each faction one at a time. So in my previous play, I had some of the people you see here. I had the Marquis de Cat uh, as an AI player, and I have that again. They're a great one to kind of uh, mix things up and fill the board. Last time I was playing the Irie, they're over here. You can kind of see them uh, just in the corner. That's where their current base is. But this time we're going to try out the AI one, although this is the one that's been errated the most. The version that was officially printed was pretty broken in a lot of ways. So I played the Irie last time and was against the AI Woodland Alliance, but now I'm going to play the Alliance. So these are kind of like these rabble-rousing uh, freedom fighters who can uh, pop up almost anywhere and destroy entire swaths of enemies if they build enough support among the people of the forest. And finally, this one wasn't in my game at all last time, but he's a good agent of chaos, although he can sometimes run away with the game. I have the Vagabot, which is the AI version of the Vagabond, chilling in the forest here. I'm not going to go through all of setup, but as you can see, the Marquis owns basically everything. They have their main keep in one corner. The Irie is in the opposite corner. I'm not on the board at all. My little mice guys haven't appeared yet. And then the Vagabot is in the forest that is adjacent to the most clearings. So if you can see, there are like these little clearings. They've got numbers next to them. Uh, this is not the regular game board. This is a neoprene mat I bought in the Kickstarter. You also don't usually get these little acrylic things that mark the type of each uh, clearing. Instead, it's just printed right on there. But I have these because they're nice and uh, they make it a little bit easier to see. And a big thing in the Clockwork expansion, a major thing for the solo overall, is that every clearing is numbered. And these are predetermined by the map and they'll be used for the AI decision making. Now, additionally, I've got all the stuff over here, okay? I've got a board for each of the AI factions and my own. I'm going to be third in player order. That's just set by the faction type. So Marquis will be first, Irie second, me third, Vagabot fourth. And we basically just go in that order, taking turns, until one of us reaches 30 victory points. We all start at zero. But those are the very basic overall details. I'll get into the specifics of how the game plays in each faction as we get into our first round. So let's see what the Marquis is doing. So all of the AI factions tend to have basically the same start to their turn. They take one card, reveal it, and the suit of that card is going to determine what they do in the turn. And then if there's an item at the bottom, they will build it. And with the Vagabond in the game, he might come and take it from their crafted items pile. And by the way, I am using the Partisan deck, which is another part of that Kickstarter expansion that I bought. So this is a different version of the main deck than what you get in the core game. Uh, but the key details are the same, like the distribution of cards and the amount of items that are in there. They just have different uh, upgrades you can build, which the AI is never going to worry about. So it doesn't affect anything except my play. All right, so the AI did get a bird suit, which is going to trigger Escalated Daylight. Uh, normally they would just do a regular turn, but Bird does this different one. Uh, the main difference is they battle a whole bunch more, which is, you know, usually good for them and bad for me, especially as the mice, but can also be worse for them if they do a lot of battles they lose. And for all these AI, it's pretty simple. You just follow the steps one by one. So first they're going to battle in every clearing on the board where they share a space with an enemy. Then they're going to recruit four warriors. The cats always recruit four of these guys. These are called warriors. They're going to try to build a building, move some guys, and attack again. That's a special one for the bird action. And then at the end of their turn in the evening, they'll score victory points based on the building type they built and uh, the furthest right empty spot. You'll see they get more and more as they build the same building type. But as the game just started, the cat is not sharing a space with anybody. Remember, the Vagabond is just kind of hanging out in the forest over here. So there will be no battling at first. Instead, the cats are going to recruit, as I said, four warriors. They always try to do that. And usually they'll be recruiting them in the places they rule, where they have the most pieces of the indicated type. Like if they had drawn a rabbit card, they'd be recruiting them there. 
But with a bird card specifically, you look for the lowest priority clearings. And here's the confusing part. Lowest priority means highest number. So 12 is the absolute lowest priority. 11 is a little bit higher. 10 is a little bit higher. So closer to one is higher priority. With a bird card, they recruit four warriors in the lowest priority clearings they rule. So that means 11 and 12 in this case. And next they try to build, and once again, they would normally build the type of building matching the card type they had drawn. But with birds, they'll build the one they have the most of to try to get more victory points. And if there's a tie, they're going to prefer sawmills. And buildings have to go, they're a little bit faded on the neoprene map, but in one of these little square spots in a clearing, which again are the main spaces of the game. And the AI cats want to build where they have the most warriors to protect their stuff. Uh, so they have three here and three here. That's the most on the board. And they're going to prefer the higher priority, lower number value when it's a tie. Then they're going to move from every clearing that has four or more warriors, leaving three behind. So if they had like, you know, five guys here, they would move two of them out, leave three to defend. But they don't have more than three anywhere, so they're going to skip that entire step. But with that bird card, they would have moved and then battled. They would have had a second chance to attack. So we just go over to evening. They're going to score with a bird card again. They'll score the highest value possible. Doesn't matter what they actually built. So here they'll get plus one for a sawmill. They are the first ones on the board with one victory point. Good job, cats. And all the AI end their turn in basically the same way, discarding the card well, except for the birds who we'll see in a second. All right, the Irie. The key thing about them is they have this decree up here and they're going to slowly add cards to it, which means they'll be able to do more and more and more in their turn. They'll recruit more, they'll move more, but at the end of every turn, they have to build a roost, a new base on a spot that has no roost already. Otherwise, they go into turmoil, lose victory points, lose all their cards, and kind of weaken again. But they start just like the cats, revealing an order card. In this case, it's a fox suit. We're gonna remember that. And there is an item they can build down here. Now, normally you would need like certain resources to build these two rabbit clearings or buildings matching that, and you would get this many victory points, but the AI ignores all of that. They always build their items for free and they always only get one victory point. The items are up here, the available one. There is a coin left. So they're gonna get one victory point for building that. And it goes in their crafted item spot. Now, if we weren't playing with a Vagabond, that would be the end of it because those items mean nothing without a Vagabond, but now he can actually come and get those from the birds later. Finally, we're going to slot the card in. So they've got one fox card, and they always have two bird cards. Those loyal viziers are always under their board. And now what it says here is we're going to resolve the decree from left to right. So we're going to recruit in fox and any clearing. I should have said this earlier, but birds are wilds. Then, we're, then they're going to move from fox and any clearing. And finally, they're going to battle in fox and any clearing and finally try to build a roost. Now, they can only recruit where they have a roost already, and that is a rabbit clearing. They're only one, so they ignore that one fox recruit. But they can do any clearing with their bird suit, and they had two cards there, so they're going to recruit two more birds. They have eight total. Yikes. Next, they move. They don't have any birds in a fox clearing, and they would move from there, so they're moving from the matching suit. But the birds match anywhere, so they are going to move from here. And how many do they move? They leave enough to rule the clearing, which again is exceeding people, or the birds have a special power where they win on ties. But they also always leave behind at least as many warriors as the number of cards in the moving column, which is two bird cards. So they're going to leave two guys behind, move out the other six. And they have three options here. Movement goes along these paths. And uh, they want to go to a place without a roost. They can build a new one, which is any of these three. They next want to go to the clearing with the fewest enemy warriors, which is nine or eight. And then finally, they like to go to actually the lower priority places instead of higher. They kind of break the mold. So they're going to send everybody in, hello, into this nine clearing and probably murder that uh, one cat there. Next, they try to battle with each set of cards. They have nobody in a fox clearing, which they could battle with that one fox card. But they do have somebody in any clearing where they can battle, which is their two bird cards. And battling is pretty simple. You roll these two D12 dice that have the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3 in equal measure. And the higher rolled value gets applied to the attacker, lower rolled value to the defender, so it is better to be the one attacking. And that number is how many pieces you remove from the other side, although only if it is not greater than your number of warriors. So the birds have a ton of warriors here. They can remove two pieces, although there's only one. And the cat can kill one bird, but even if he had rolled, you know, another two, he would still only kill one bird because there's only one warrior that would actually attack. So the birds lose one, and the cat lose their only one. Bye-bye.
And dead warriors go back to the faction supply. They can come back and join the fun later. And finally, to finish out their turn, the birds will try to build a roost in a place where they don't already have one. Their only option right now is here because they need to rule the clearing and they don't have birds anywhere else. And then kind of like the cats, they'll score the victory points of the leftmost revealed spot, so one in this case. Which puts them slightly in the lead with two victory points, because don't forget they got one for building that coin item earlier. Alright, and finally we get to me, the Woodland Alliance, the only human in the game. So the key thing for them is, as you saw, they don't start out on the board, but I can place these little sympathy tokens by discarding cards from this supporter's stack. I start with three at the beginning of the game. And placing these will get me victory points. You'll see the values increase as I uh, place ones further to the right. And additionally, they will later give me the option to stage revolts, which will place my bases on the board, which will give me more card draw at the end of every turn because human players do actually have a hand of cards, unlike the AI. And these bases will also help me get warriors on the board. To win, I need to do like a mix of the two and try to protect all my stuff because these are very easy for the AI to destroy. All right, so the first part of my turn is based on these supporter cards. Again, I have three. First, I can revolt by discarding two of a kind. So like here, I have two mouse cards. And that would let me place one of my bases. But to do that, I need to already have sympathy on the board. And I have none. So I'm going to skip revolt and go to spread sympathy. And how that works is I, again, discard cards from my supporters. The number of cards I need is equal to where the token I'm placing is. So one card for the first three, two for the uh, second set of three, and three for the later ones. Additionally, it says down here in tiny print, uh, martial law means I got to spend an extra card, discard an extra card, if the place I'm placing in has three or more wars of a single faction. They basically protect against my uh, sympathy spreading to the people. So I've got two mice and a bunny rabbit. Let's see what I can do. Looking at the board, I've got this little, like, triangle of mice and bunny spots in the lower right corner. I'd actually kind of rather be where the cats and birds are fighting each other, because if they're fighting each other, they're less likely to hit me. But I'm also pretty safe if I go into multiple different clearing types with the cats, unless they draw another bird card, because then they'll attack all my guys. These places only have one warrior each, so I'm pretty safe. I'm going to do one mouse and one rabbit to place support in each of these spots. I'll hang on to one for a future turn. And the first sympathy token is worth nothing, but the second one's worth one victory point. Yay! Okay, next I go into daylight. This is where I can use the actual cards in my hand. I've got two bird cards, which you'll see is pretty lucky because those are wild. So if I put them in my supporters pile, I can like really make sure I can use them well. But I can also build stuff, and how I build is having sympathy tokens on matching clearings. So, like, the crossbow needs one sympathy on a fox clearing, which I don't have any of. But I do have a sympathy in a mouse clearing, which would let me uh, build this League of Adventurous Mice thing that would give me free moves and attacks. But I don't have any warriors yet. So, uh, the other thing I can do with these is put them into my supporters pile. Now, I don't necessarily want to do all of them because I can't have more than five cards in here until I get at least one base down. So let's just do both of these uh, bird cards, since those are wild. I'll keep this in my hand for later. And then normally I get to do all these fun military operations, but I need to have some actual uh, warriors and officers and bases down before that. So I'm just going to go to the draw phase. I draw one card, plus one per base I've built, which is currently zero. So I draw this one card. And a fox card. There we go. And that is it. That was a <laughs> pretty straightforward and quick turn. Uh, hopefully it'll get back to me quickly. Finally, we get to our last AI faction, the Vagabot. Again, this is a what they're calling director's cut version from the Better Bot Project. I think it works better than the one that was officially printed, which I do have underneath here for some reason. I just have to give the board a little bit more heft. And even the Ranger guy that they are playing as the AI is different. I'll uh, go over that if it comes up. But just like all the other AI, I'm going to reveal the top order card. It is a bunny. He did not build an item for himself, which is very good because that gives him a lot more actions. But he would have crafted an order if he was super hurt, if he had like a ton of his items, because basically the item tokens become his actions for the AI. If a ton of them were damaged, he would do basically nothing except for uh, going into the forest and resting. But since that is clearly not the case, we instead go to daylight and we see which suit he drew, bunnies. And that'll tell us what actions he tried to do in what order. He's going to do a special action for the ranger, which is repairing items. None of his are damaged, so no worries there. Then he's going to try to aid somebody that has constructed an item. And finally, he's going to try to battle. He always ends his turn battling as much as he can with his uh, leftover items. So for his first action, the aid action, he wants to get to a faction that has at least one crafted item. Right now, that's just the Irie. 
So he's going to move. It's one action to move from a forest to an adjacent clearing. And then uh, he'll go to the higher priority one. So another one to get there. That'll take him two move actions. And to mark that, you just exhaust each of the items as you use it. And finally, to do the actual aid action, he's going to exhaust another item. And in doing so, he takes the coin from the birds, and it goes into his satchel, his supply. So now he's got another action for this turn. And that additionally gives him a victory point, his first. If he was trading with a real player, they would get to draw a card as kind of their part of the deal. But with the AI, that doesn't happen. And then finally, he's going to want to battle. And then always exhaust one item for your first battle, though you might have to move because he's always going to attack the faction with the most victory points. And then uh, two items for every subsequent battle. So he's only going to be able to do one battle this turn. And luckily for him and potentially for us, the birds have two victory points more than everybody else. So he wants to be here attacking them. He's going to go ahead and fight. And we got a three and a one. Now, until he gets more items, he's actually locked at one hit max. So that's all he's going to do. And they are going to do one hit back to him, even though they had two soldiers. So he defeats one of these guys, and he gets one victory point for every warrior he defeats when attacking. He does not get that if he's defending. And then he's going to damage one of his items for the damage he took. It comes down here, where it can't be used for now. And he's always going to damage an exhausted one before an unexhausted one. He doesn't want to cost his own actions. And then he would like to fight the leftover bird again with two more items, but he doesn't have them. So we go into evening. First, he refreshes up to four items. We're on the uh, kind of basic difficulty, so... And he can refresh ones that are damaged, so there we go. And then he's going to repair one item, so he is undamaged now. But that's the main way to slow him down, to damage some of his items. Hopefully the AI will do that for me, because clearly I don't have uh, much way to do that myself yet until I get warriors on the board. All right, there you go. One full round of Root down. Uh, the Marquis has expanded some in the middle. I've got a little bit of Rebellion brewing in the bottom corner. The birds made a strong push up the side, but the uh, Vagabot is messing with them down here. Okay, now we're going to get to the Mechanical Marquis turn. I would love, love if they drew a Fox card instead of a Mouse or a Bunny. And a Bird draw would be super devastating because they would kill both of these. I know, sometimes my wishes are answered. They drew a fox, and they're not even going to attack these guys. Yes, let us spread our descent. And with that non-bird card, I can now show you a more typical mechanical marquee turn. Uh, they didn't have an item to craft, so they're going to battle in all the fox clearings that have enemies in them, recruit only in fox clearings, still four warriors, build a fox building, which is actually good for them because that's what they've already built, move from fox clearings, and expand is a special thing that happens if they didn't build a building and don't have very many on the board. Basically, if you knock them down too hard, they'll get a double turn. All right, so there are no enemies in Fox Clearings, and they're going to spread the four guys as evenly as possible. In this case, they put one in each. Now they're going to build where they have the most warriors and room, which is going to be number 12 right here. They've got four guys there. And then they're going to move from Fox Clearings, where they have more than three warriors, remember? Which in this case is just 12, and they want to go towards the most enemies. So, hello, giant bird army. How are you? And finally, they're going to score points. In this turn, it's just going to be for Foxes, the one they built, which is two more. They're up to three. And thank you, Marquis, for the quick turn. That's how they usually go. Uh, the birds are getting a bunny card. Not necessarily good for them to have a mix of everything. There was nothing to craft on there, at least no item. So they're going to recruit, then move, then battle. Remember, one fox, one bunny, and two birds being a wild. So the one fox is wasted. The one bunny has to go on their only bunny roost. The uh, mouse one doesn't count. Then they have two more warriors, but they've got two places they could put them. This is for the wild. They prefer to first go where there's the most enemy pieces trying to kill them, but it's tied. We've got uh, one enemy for each of them. So they next go where they have the fewest warriors. So they'll boost up their defenses against the wolf guy here. Next, they're going to move first from Fox, then from Bunny, then from anywhere. They don't have anybody in a Fox clearing. But from Bunny, they will move. They only have one Bunny card, which means they're going to leave only one guy behind because they're still going to rule the clearing. It's the number of wars plus the number of buildings. And for the Irie, they just have to tie. So even if it was like that, just the building and uh, the wolf, they would still be ruling that clearing. And they want to go towards somewhere where they don't have a roost and with fewer warriors. So they're going to head over to eight. Finally, we have their two bird cards, their wild cards. And when they have a choice of where to move people from, they'll always go with the place with the most warriors, which is clearing a nine here with five guys. They're going to leave two behind for the two bird cards. And they could go to 12 or one. Neither has a roost. They want the place that is easier for them to destroy. Sorry, cats. And before they build a roost to show their decree again, they're going to fight in a fox clearing, then in a bunny clearing, and then in any clearing. 
And just to note, even though this didn't come up the first turn, whichever suits in the decree have the most cards, when they battle with those, they get plus one hit. And uh, if there's tied things, so like if there were two foxes and two birds, both of those would get plus one hit. So it's better for us when they don't have a bunch of suits tied in terms of the number of cards. First, they want to fight in a fox clearing. One and eight were both options. They have equal number of warriors. In that case, remember, they usually prefer the higher number, the lower priority. And wow, three, three. So they're going to kill both these cat warriors, but they'll kill two of them in response. Even though there was a three, there's only two guys to actually fight back. And I always like my enemies killing each other. Thanks, guys. And next, they have a bunny combat. The only place they share people is here. So let's see how they do against the raccoon. Oh, a two and zero. So he doesn't hurt this guy at all, but they will do one damage to him since there's only one warrior. Which will mean another item is damage. Never a bad thing. I don't flip it over. It just goes to the damage box. That means he's going to have four actions this turn instead of five. Nice. And finally, we get to his wild combat with plus one hit. Uh, he has a bunch of places he could fight, but he always prefers a place with no roots because he needs to uh, set up his next build so he doesn't go into turmoil. So he's attacking those cats. Oh, a three, zero. So they are both dead and didn't get any hits in reply. So you might need to slow this guy down a bit. He's got pretty much the entire west side of the board to himself. And Roos are basically the one thing that he wants higher priority, a lower number for. So he could build an 8 or 1. In this case, he's going to take that corner. So bam, there he goes. And that is two victory points, putting him in the lead again with four. All right, now it's my turn. Remember, the first thing I can do is stage revolt. If I have two of a kind matching a clearing, I already have sympathy in. Let's see if I can do this. And yes, I can. I prepared well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a wild and a mouse. I'd rather save my other wild and stage a revolt right here, even though it's a pretty dangerous place. The birds are right over here. A bunch of cats are there. We'll see how we do. So I take the base matching that clearing type and I kill everybody here. Just getting one cat warrior wasn't too great, but you can take out like 20 guys and a bunch of buildings if you're lucky. I then get one free warrior there for every sympathy token I have of that type. In this case, I only have one mouse. So just one guy hanging out. And I also get one officer in my officer box, which is very important because those are going to give me all of my military actions. Although I have a very limited number of warriors, so if I put too many guys in here, I can't actually uh, have a big force on the board. Okay, next I can spread sympathy with my one bird card. And looking at my hand, I don't have any bunny cards to add to this, which would let me potentially revolt and get my bunny base down next turn. So yeah, I think I will uh, spend this to spread sympathy again. Now, it has to always go adjacent to my existing sympathy, and it was a bird, so I could go here, although they have no roost there, so they're definitely going to move a ton of people there to kill me if I put it there. And I would need two cards to go here or here because they have three or more warriors, so I'll go to the only spot available, that fox clearing up there. And that does give me a victory point. I'm up to two. Yay, last place. Let's look at my hand. I've got a mouse card and a fox card. So I have three options of what I can do with my cards. I can craft, which we already talked about. I can mobilize, which means adding a card to my supporter pile. Or I can train more officers by spending a card that matches where I have a base. So I'm going to spend this mouse card, and boom, I got a second officer. More actions. Now I could build this, since I do have one sympathy and a fox clearing. False orders. In Birdsong, it's the start of your turn. May discard this card to move half of an enemy's warriors rounded up from any clearing, treating yourself as that player and ignoring rule. And uh, nah, I'd rather just have more supporters. All right, now I get to the fun military operation. Because I have two officers, I'm going to get two actions. For each one, I can move a warrior, recruit another warrior where I have a base, start a battle, or remove a warrior to place a sympathy, which ignores the need to discard cards. But in this case, let's take things slow and steady and just recruit two more warriors because I really don't want this base being destroyed. Uh, if it is, you lose all your sympathy of the matching type. You lose half your officers. Uh, it's just bad business. Ooh, but look how in the money I am. I get two cards this turn because of my one base and they're both bunnies. Okay, I guess uh, we will be trying to do something with that later. Oh, and if you're wondering how the heck do I get more cards in my supporters, because just adding them from my hand is kind of slow, uh, every time any enemy moves onto a space, a clearing with one of my sympathy tokens, I get a supporter. And every time they destroy one, I get a supporter. So I'm hoping like the cats and the birds will move all around where I am without killing me and uh, get me a ton of support as their armies upset the uh, denizens of the forest. All right, Vagabot, what you up to? Oh, a mouse, but he is building himself some boots. That's one victory point and an extra action frame. It's the worst when he builds them. So that would go right into his satchel, but you'll see this battle track is going to take his 6th, ninth, and 12th constructed item. This is his 6th. 
He doesn't have an extra action, but now he can get a max hit of two in combat, so he's ready to really deal some damage. Okay, and Mouse is going to have him quest, and then aid, but nobody has items, and then battles. So he's just going to quest and battle. Questing is pretty simple for the AI. You look at the type of clearing they have to get to, a rabbit clearing in this case, and they just have to exhaust two items once they get there. You ignore all of this, and they just get two victory points. And lucky for him, he's literally already in a rabbit clearing, so that's going to be easy. So he exhausts two of these. He gets two victory points. Yeah, this guy tends to be tough to uh, keep down. Then, as I said, he can't take the aid action because nobody else has items. So he's going to battle, and he wants to battle of the highest victory point other player, which is Bird. So, sorry guys, I think he's probably going to kill your base. So that'll cost, so that'll exhaust one item for his first attack, two for every subsequent one. And there he goes. He uh, did two damage, which will kill the one Bird Warrior there and destroy the Roost. Although he took a damage, so that'll go down there. And he's real happy about that because he gets victory points for each destroyed warrior. Nobody else does. But everyone gets victory points for each destroyed building. So, wow, he's already up to seven. And he has one item left to exhaust. And he wants to move to fight more guys. So he's going to exhaust it to move one clearing. And he still wants to target the birds. They have the most victory points. And he goes to the place where they have the most stuff. So, yikes. So that is a crowded clearing over there. Okay, and he'll again refresh four items. And then repair one of them. So he's uh, still down one from his max. Okay, kitty cats, this time I would love a mouse card so you don't destroy my sympathy. Oh, a fox card, and he's building the other boot for one victory point. So first he's going to battle in all the fox clearings, but the only one he has to battle in is sadly where my token is. He destroys it uh, without even needing to roll because you get one free hit when it's undefended. Now I'll give him another victory point up to five, but the outrage of him destroying my sympathy will get me a supporter card, so that's kind of nice. Next, he's going to recruit in fox clearings. There are four of each type, but the birds rule this one and the one in the corner. So he's just going to do two warriors in each of these ones. And then he'll build another sawmill. He keeps on getting the same types. We need to take some of these down. He wants to go where he has the most warriors, but he has no room for buildings here. Uh, these ruins can be removed by the vagabonds who open up another spot, but they haven't been yet, which is good for us. Doesn't have any room over there either, so he'll go to the next highest number of warriors there. Now he's going to move from places where he has more than three warriors in fox clearings. And no, no, these two guys want to go where the most opposing pieces are, which is my clearing. So that's going to get me another outrage card, though, from them coming in. And then same thing for the extra guy here, because the only enemy piece is my sympathy token there. So, man, I got a lot of these now. Ah, but they're all foxes and wild, so I cannot build a, a rabbit base there next turn, darn. And yeah, we definitely got to slow this guy down a little bit. He's getting three more victory points. That takes him to eight, just past the Vagabot, although he's gotten a whole extra turn, so I'm sure the Vagabot will still be in the lead in a second. Whereas the Irie has gotten knocked back pretty well by the Vagabot. But he can't keep a good bird down. Let's see what they're doing. A mouse card. Oh, so they've got one of each. Good for their amount of attacks, but that means they're going to move and battle a ton. Okay, first for their recruiting, their only rooster in the corner. So for the fox card, they'll build there. For the mouse card there, they can't use the bunny card. And then for the wild, remember, they want to defend where there's a lot of enemies. So there they go. Okay, then they're going to move from the fox clearing, all but one guy, since there's one card. And uh, they'd rather go to the lower priority. Ooh, good, that's a sawmill. Blow that thing up for me, please, so the cat stop getting so many victory points. Okay, next they'll move from the mouse clearing. They're only going to leave one guy there. Might not be too wise, everybody. And they actually prefer to come back down to four, since the vagabond just blew it up and ran away and left it empty. Oh, and now that's the most troops on a bunny space, so they're going to leave just one guy there. And then again, they're going to move to eight, because it has the fewest enemies. They uh, don't see a roost there yet, so they won't stay away. Oh, and hey, more supporters for me. Finally, for their wild, there are the most troops here. They're going to move two guys from here. Oh, wait, no. They're not going to go there. They're actually going to be silly and head back the way they came, because uh, there's fewer enemies there, and there's no roost. All right, the only potential battles are here and here. All right, so first for their mouse card, they'll attack here, and they prefer the player with the most victory points, which uh, sadly for the cats is them, because they just passed the Vagabond. A uh, two and one. Oh, so I guess that means that nobody is there. <laughs> Blow up their base, I guess, buddy. Then for their bunny fight, they're going to attack here, and they lose one bird, but they do get the cat and the building. That gets them a victory point. And they actually have nowhere left to fight, so they're just going to build a roost. And their preference, highest priority, will be back in four. They're just uh, kind of trading with the Vagabot here. That's going to net them two more victory points. That does mean the Vagabot is going to be targeting the cats this round, and certainly not little old me. All right, speaking of me, 
Oh man, I got so many uh, good cards, but I can't do a revolt because again, my only sympathy without a base is there. So I think I'll spend two fox cards. I need an extra because there's uh, three warriors there. To place it there, uh, it would be easier to place it here, but the birds almost always attack them, whereas the cats sometimes don't, so I think it's a little bit safer. And that leaves me with enough cards to revolt there if they haven't killed me by next turn. And that's one victory point. I'm at three, <laughs> but we're ramping up, baby. We're ramping up. All right, the only cards in my hand are bunny cards, so I'm just going to put them both in my supporters pile. Then for my two military actions, I'm going to build a guy here and then actually move him over here. Uh, as you'll see when they fight, I have an advantage in defensive battle. I actually use the higher die instead of the attacker. So even one warrior being here gives me a much better chance of surviving even if they attack. And two cards for me, and then we're moving on. To our friend the Vagabot just chilling with an undefended roost. And he's going to build himself some tea for a victory point, you jerk. And then drawing a mouse card, he's going to quest for two more victory points. And then go get uh, the boots from the cat for another victory point, and then maybe fight two. Wow, man. I should have flipped over his new quest. It is a fox clearing. He has to actually move, at least. So there's one adjacent. He'll spend one to move, two to do the quest. Actually, two adjacent, but he prefers the higher priority one. And now he wants to get to the cats to buy their item. He has two items left, so he'll use one to move there, one to buy it. And then, like a true jerk, he'll immediately use the item he bought to attack the cats, because they have the most victory points besides him. Okay, but he did not destroy their building. He only got one hit. One of his items got damaged. But still, look at this. <laughs> yeah, he got two from the quest, one from getting the item, one from killing the cat warrior. Wow. Now, when he refreshes items, if he has none damage, he refreshes six. But if he has at least one damage, he only refreshes four. So he is going to have uh, five actions next turn, but at least not as many as he could have. All right, cats, do me a solid. Don't draw a fox card, because you'll build another sawmill, and you'll kill my big place. Yes, bunny. Although, oh, bunny. You know, it looks like bad luck for me. That's the only place where they can fight, so I'll get them a victory point. Although it does give me an outrage card. Oh, and then yikes. This is literally the only clearing that they have of bunnies, which means they're certainly building there. But it's just a workshop, so that's only going to get one victory point. But then, all three of these guys are going to the place with the most enemies. Oh, my lord, that's a lot of cats. But I get another outrage? Yay, I guess? And like I said, they're only getting one more victory point. They're at 10. Still behind the Vagabot. As for Electric Irie... Oh, interesting. They got another bird. I thought they were going to get another uh, plus one hit bonus, but now they just have three for their wild. I'm right, trying to get it in frame now. They have uh, three roosts. Uh, the Vagabot just left that behind, so they will recruit one in each. And then the three from the bird will go to the place with the least. There we go. Get them for their fox move. They'll move in here. I know it makes more sense maybe for them to go there, but they want to go where there's uh, fewer enemies. For the mouse move, this is potentially great. Uh, they're coming in here, which will give me an outrage, but they're going to attack the cat and not me when it's like that. But for the bunny move, they want to avoid all those shenanigans and go where there is no roost and no enemies. And finally, most troops here, but they have three birds now, so they're only going to move two of them, leave three behind. And they have to go where there's no roost. Another outrage for me, and please fight those guys for me, yes. All right, yeah, I should be able to spread a lot of sympathy this coming turn. All right, there's going to be a lot of fighting going on. They're going to fight in a fox clearing first against the cats. Whoa, three and three? That... <laughs> That was kind of awesome. I mean, I was going to blow them all up in a second anyway with my base, but uh, now I can just get the victory point for that, and they don't. Awesome. Yeah, actually, that's beautiful, because if they killed all the cats, then they might have come after me next. Okay, now their only mouse fight is over here. I don't see this going too well for them. I would love if they rolled well here. Awesome. They lose one, but they get two cats, even though they rolled a three. All right, and they have no bunny fight, so the only place they can fight is here again. Yeah, kill each other. Okay, so one hit will finish them off. They can only do one hit, but because that was the bird suit with their most cards, they do an extra hit. So, wow, that was awesome. <laughs> my enemies is going at each other. And that, by the way, is why, when possible, I like to build my bases in kind of the muck of things, because I want them to uh, be moving around, but attacking each other instead of me, ideally. Uh, speaking of bases and roosts, they are going to build a roost here, and they'll get three victory points. So they're actually tied with the cats. And I'm way behind, but I feel like things are going to look up in a second. Yeah, let's see what I got. Oh my gosh, four wilds. Uh, the bunnies I put in there, two foxes. Awesome. So first things first, revolt. I'm going to discard two fox supporters to revolt here, so I will destroy their sawmill and get a victory point, my fourth. 
Once again, I'm light on sympathy, so I only get one free warrior here. But I also get an officer for building a new base. Although, as you can see, I'm already really light on the number of warriors I have. And I can place more sympathy. Okay, so I can really do a lot here. I know if I go to these little bird clearings, they're just going to blow them all up. But they're so cheap to place into, and I get victory points for doing so, that I kind of feel like I should anyway. So yeah, let's spend a wild to go there. And then I go up to where it costs two cards. I'll spend two bunnies to go there, and then two birds to go up to the fox one. And I'll keep one wild for later. And hey, that's one, two, four more victory points. I'm up to eight. Not quite fully in the money, but doing better. And right, let's see. I've got two cards left. I could get a fourth officer. I know that wouldn't give me, like, enough troops to do much, but it would give me a bunch of actions, and I can move guys in and then uh, place more sympathy to get even more victory points. So, yeah, I think I'll get a fourth officer with the mouse card. And then I think I'm going to actually build a card, because this one is amazing for the alliance. It says you treat clearings with your crafting pieces as adjacent. So I'm going to build that. And what does that mean? Well, for the Alliance, their sympathy tokens are their crafting pieces. So that means I can, like, move a warrior from here to there, even all the way up to the corner of the board for one action. Now, speaking of actions, I have four. I'm actually not going to kill the cat because he might protect me if the uh, birds come in here, potentially. But I am going to get myself some more victory points. I'm going to go one, two, three to place a sympathy there. Remember, I can do that just by removing a warrior and spending an action. That's two more victory points. I'm up to ten, kind of getting tied with everybody. Then for my final action, I'll get a third warrior here, too. That's pretty safe, unless they come at me super strong. All right, so I'll probably see a ton of sympathy get destroyed next round, but I should also see a bunch of people moving it through those spaces, which will get me a bunch more cards. So, uh, yeah, hopefully things will work out okay. By the way, with two bases, I'm drawing three cards now. Nice little mix there. All right, but the actual leader of the game, the Vagabot, is up. Let's hope that he slows down a bit. Okay, good. He didn't build an item for himself. Uh, thank God for small favors. He's doing a fox action, which will be explore. That means he'll get rid of those little ruin tokens I showed you. Then he's going to do his special, which, oh no, will repair an extra thing. That's what the ranger does in the uh, errated version. And then he'll battle. So a good thing for me is the closest explore token is actually two away, so that's going to spend two of his actions right there. And the third one will explore. Uh, he just gets rid of the ruin now that you can build more buildings there, and he gets the bag item. Oh, and the bag was actually his ninth item, so now he can deal three hits in combat, but he doesn't get it for an action this turn, so he only has two left. So he wants to use his special, which will repair one, which means he's going to refresh six at the end of the turn, darn it. And then he wants to battle... And interestingly, with us all tied, he's fine to battle the birds. Now, I hope they hit him so he refreshes fewer items. Yes, even one hit his final, though, gosh, he just got three victory points from killing those guys. But their one damage will keep him to only having four actions next turn before he repairs. That's certainly better. And yeah, we're all tied at 10, except for him who's at 15. A pretty sizable lead. Okay, Marquis is up. Let's see how many of my things they destroy. Mouse clearing, huh? Man, except for one mouse clearing up there, they are only in this part of the board. They have been pretty much wiped out. So they want to fight in these two mouse clearings. So they're going to blow up this one with no opposition. That'll give me one outrage, but then one victory point. And then here they should have much less luck, because remember, I get the higher die instead of them. Oh, beautiful. So that means they don't do any damage to me. Get out of here, buddy. Then they only rule two mouse clearings, so they're going to get two guys in each. And the spot with the most warriors that they can fit a building in is here. This is their keep, by the way. It doesn't matter as much for the AI, but it does stop people from placing stuff straight in there, so I couldn't put a sympathy in there to blow it up. Okay, now they're going to move. Uh, this guy goes to the highest priority clearing because there's no enemy, so he'll go right there. Whereas these two guys want to attack me. Uh, this place has... No, actually, they're equal. Oh, they can't reach there. Never mind. So this is the only adjacent one. Beautiful. More outrage. And because they built the recruiters, a little handshake icon, they only get one victory point this turn. So not too great for them. The Irie, though, even though they're getting their uh, butt kicked a bit, should be better. They get another bunny, but still not enough to get a plus one hit. Okay, and they're going to recruit one there. One there. They're only mouse clearing. Two here from the bunnies. And then finally, I want to recruit where my pieces are. And uh, the tie's going to go to the lower priority one, so we'll get three for the birds there. All right, now movement. This might be a little ugly for me. So the most fox warriors are here, but hey, it's another outrage, so I'll take it. And then for mice, they're moving a ton of guys in, but again, another outrage. And they'll move one guy in from here, so much outrage. 
And then for the wild, they're actually moving two guys out of here. Might be good for me if they start attacking and into where the Vagabot is. And I just realized what's great is for a lot of their attacks, instead of attacking my tokens and destroying them, they're going to be attacking my bases because they want to go to places that don't have roos. So that means this is their fox attack. And sadly, they attack the person with the most pieces there, so I'm a juicier target than the cats. Zero, zero! <laughs> I will take that any day. Now for mice, same thing. They're going to attack here instead of back where my token is. Awesome. Okay, so I get the two and they get the one. So they are wiped out. Darn, I kind of wish they uh, might have been able to attack again. And again, instead of attacking the clearing with my token, they're going to attack the Vagabot here because there's no roost here, which is excellent. Kick his butt. Okay, one hit. Why not? I just like him being damaged and refreshing less. Okay, now where he gets the plus one hit, which one is he going to pick? Ah, darn, he is attacking me. It's uh, no roost, then most defenseless buildings, and neither of us have defenseless buildings, and then lowest priority, the 12 wins out. Okay, so they're all like a double three, that would be death. Oh my gosh! <laughs> now they get plus one hit, so I still lose somebody, but I executed all of those guys. Long live the Alliance! Okay, and them not taking any of my tokens out should pretty much cement me smashing the opposition this turn, I think, and shooting ahead of even the Vagabot. Oh, but even though they got their butt kicked everywhere they attacked me, they are going to be able to build a roost there. Which will get them four more victory points. I'm in last place, but not for long. So let's see. I've got uh, three foxes, two wilds. That could let me revolt uh, in a bunny spot and one mouse. So yeah, let's definitely revolt here. So I'll kill those guys and kill their roost for a victory point. That cost me both my wilds, though. And sorry, birds. I kind of feel like everyone's ganging up on you. So that gets me one warrior there with my last base and uh, one more officer, so I have five officers now. I can barely even uh, stage a defensive force, but I get a ton of actions. All right, let's see, I've got these left. And if I place a sympathy, it'll only cost me two cards, uh, plus one if there's three warriors. So I'll do two foxes to go uh, right here and get two victory points. So I'm up to 13. I'll hang all these other supporters for later. Let's see, I've got these cards. I'll go ahead and build the crossbow for one victory point. I guess the uh, <laughs> the AI Vagabond can come and get it if he wants. I'm just going to try to burst into a quick win here if I can. Now, there's no boots left to build. And discarding an enemy's crafted card won't do anything in a solo, so I'm just going to uh, put both of these into my supporter stack. And now at the moment, I've got no extra troops to rally, but I've got five officers, and look... If I can get some of these down, that's three victory points, four victory points, four victory points. I just have to get some warriors in the clearings and place support. So yeah, to that end, let's go one, two. That'll be three more victory points. I'm now in the lead. And then I guess uh, three, four. That's four more victory points. So that gets me to 21. This is why you don't want to leave the Alliance alone. And then for my last action, I'll try to defend the spot where the cats are. I'm sure I'm going to lose at least one base this turn, if not more. And now the Vagabot's going to clearly have a beeline for me, but hopefully I've built enough of an insurmountable lead that I can still win. And even if they come blasting me in every quarter, I should get a ton of cards from them doing so. And actually, hopefully the Vagabot will be busy enough doing whatever actions he draws to not even hurt me. I hope it doesn't help that he's building a coin for a fifth action. So Bunny Special. Okay, so he's going to kill that for one. Then aid. I'm the only one with items, so yeah, I guess he's going to spend one to get my bow. That gets me a fifth card to go with the four I got at the end of my turn. Yeah, but now he's going to kick my butt as much as he can with uh, his four remaining items. So let's see, he'll blast that for one, he'll come in here for two, and he'll attack me for three, four. Oh, wait, actually, yeah, he wants to go where there's the most stuff, so he'll attack me there. And by the way, he doesn't count as a warrior, so I don't get outrage cards when he moves in, but I did get one from him destroying that place. Okay, there's a big fight. I don't want him to hit me too hard. Ooh, okay, so I get the three, so I only do two damage to him, but he does two to me, which means that he's going to get two victory points from that, putting him just one behind me. Wow. But he did not get my uh, stuff yet. Well, good for me. I damaged him enough that he's still going to only have four actions next turn. Although, like I said, he evened the victory points very quickly. Okay, the birds and the cats are both kind of reeling. The cats have one extra place you can't see up there. Ooh, but they are going to build a bag for one victory point and then attack everywhere. This can't be good. Yeah, so they're going to attack here. Uh, they, they get one hit automatically, so unless they roll a double zero, I'm going to lose both things. There we go. So that's two victory points for them. And because I lost a base, oh lord, I have to remove all the sympathy from fox clearings. That's going to be two more gone. And then I lose half my officers rounded up. Oof. 
Looks like their only other battle is going to be destroying that one. So that's another victory point. They are catching up. And I got only two outrage from that because the removed ones don't give me any. Now they're going to recruit two warriors each in the lowest priority places they rule, which is actually 12 again. They're going to build a sawmill here. And they're going to move and attack. Now just one guy will come in here that'll give me an outrage. And then one guy will come over here and attack the wolf. That's cool. Okay, let's see how the wolf battle goes first. Just one weapon damage. As for me, I can't die, but they could smash me up. Yes! <laughs> so I just defeat them. Awesome. Okay, and that was their third sawmill, so they're up to 18 victory points. Okay, so that hurt, but if the Irie doesn't smash me too much, I might be able to recover. And they're doing a mouse card. That's their second. Okay, first they recruit one in this fox clearing, two in their only mouse roost, two in their only bunny roost. Glad that one's away from me. And then sadly, three more here, because that's the only one with an enemy in it, my token. Okay, next they move uh, one guy from the fox clearing over here, the only place without a roost. All but two guys over here, yikes. Oh, but then good for me, they'll move two guys from here to, oh, I guess uh, there, okay. And finally they'll move one guy from here all the way over to there, good luck. Okay, we'll see how much they leave me alone. First they're going to fight here, they're going to fight the cats. Oh man, they killed the two of them and didn't lose any. And then the only place they can fight mice is here, so I lose another one of those. And this is their only bunny target. Oh, please roll low numbers. Oh no, two and two. Okay, now the good thing is, uh, I'll defeat one of their guys. I can choose to have this go away and not the base yet, although they'll probably just attack it again in a second. And yeah, sadly, they are going for defenseless buildings. Otherwise, they would have gone for that one if I just had one guy left. No. So I'm down to literally just one sympathy on my last base. And I only have one officer left. Now, the good thing is, I could only have five of these cards if I lost all my bases, but with at least one surviving, boom, I got a bunch of them. And they're building a roost in the corpse of my base, getting four victory points, up to 20. And now it's my turn to pick up the pieces, wow. Now, let's see, if I can just get, <laughs> is it even possible, uh, nine victory points? I can use the bird and the mouse in my hand to get three officers, so that will be enough to spread influence, I guess, just once. So you get nine, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I can get six sympathy spread, I will win this turn. Uh, might be possible. Look how many cards I have. Oh, crud. When a base is removed, I lose all matching supporters, including birds. Oh, I totally didn't keep track. Okay. Crud. I, mean, I know I still have all the bunnies. There was one card that was bunnies, and I feel like they maybe destroyed one after that, but wow. That means I do have one sympathy back. I don't even remember where the heck it was, but I'll just put it somewhere. Yeah, I forgot I lost the supporter, so that is devastating. All right, with the fox, I'll go in here, because nobody has more than three warriors there. That's one victory point. I'm at 22. And with the bunny, I'll go... Oh, no. And then I don't have enough cards to do it again. But like I planned, I will use the bird and mouse to get two more officers. And ooh, I can build root T. That's two victory points. But I don't have sympathy in another mouse clearing, so that'll be the only one I can do. So that gets me to 24, definitely closer. I'll put the last uh, two bunny ones and supporters. Okay, now I've got three officers. Yeah, there's definitely no way I'm going to win this turn. So I think I'll build up for next turn to get a ton of defenses. Because this one shouldn't get destroyed. They'll be fighting each other, most likely. I guess uh, the Vagabot will target me, potentially. Actually, you know, with that in mind, I'm actually going to keep this card for the one victory point item I can build. I want everything I can get. Because I'm only drawing two more cards at the end of my turn. And no items to build there, darn. Yeah, they took me out pretty well. Let's see if the Vagabot can finish the job. Fox. Oh, he's going to explore. That's good. That'll take him away from me. Oh, no, wait. He's right on exploration space. Darn. <laughs> so he's going to do that. I'll get him another action. Wait, is that his 12th? 7, 9, 11? Yes, so it's not another action yet. Okay, then I'll do his special. Okay, so he only has one attack left. He's just going to blow up my sympathy right on him, of course. And then he will spend his last item moving towards my next one. So that leaves him right there. But actually, he's only at uh, 21 victory points, so he didn't shoot ahead much. All right, and then he's right there. Him attacking me is definitely slowing down his victory points because he can't get all the uh, warrior kills. Okay, but Mechanical Marquis could certainly threaten me. Haha, <laughs> I built the T before he could, yes, and he's doing a mouse action. I don't think there are any mouse battles. Wait, I lied, I forgot that bird that ran over to his keep. Yep, he is dead. And then he's recruiting two here and two there. And he can fit another recruiter there. That'll give him two victory points in a second. Let's see, movement-wise, all three of these guys want to come fight the birds. And similarly, these two guys want to bother the birds. 
He's only at two, so he's not really in contention. The Irie, though, gets to do so much stuff. Oh, so now they have a third bunny, which will give them a plus one hit for the bunny fight. Okay, so first I'll recruit one over where my token is. And uh, two on their only mouse roost. Three on their threatened bunny roost. And actually, they're going to recruit there again because it's the most enemy pieces. That's all of their units, by the way. They uh, had one more than they could place. All right, now movement will take a minute. This guy's going to go there. These two guys will head there. All but three of these guys want to go to the place with the fewest pieces. That's six, and that's six. So they prefer lower priority. They're coming down here to join their friends. And finally, for the wild, this huge group is going to leave three behind. And let's see, I've got six guys down here. No, seven with the Vagabots. So good, they're going it to the cats. Although maybe I want the Outrage card. Oh well. That's a pretty good chance my uh, sympathy will be safe. My only remaining one besides my base one. They're going to attack here. Uh, they get two. That's it. And for a mouse fight, they'll attack here. I hope they roll low. Ah, darn. Three and two. So that means the buildings are exposed for them to finish off and get a bunch more victory points. Bunny fight. They're attacking here. Oof. All right, so they got a building there as well. They're going to be jumping ahead. And for their final fight, like they did with me before, they're going to go for the defenseless buildings. That will get them two more victory points. Wow. They're going to build a roost up here. And yikes, they have so many roosts. They're up to 28 victory points. They almost won right there. If I don't win this turn, oh, I don't think I can. I don't think I can win this turn. That seems really, really impossible. Well, I guess we'll try our best. I've only got a bunny and a fox in my uh, pile. All right, so I'm going to use the bunny to build over here next to uh, my wand over here you can't see. Unfortunately, I'm up to needing two cards, so the fox is useless. And this is all I've left in my hand. I can't get any more officers to get extra actions. Darn it. But I can build the uh, bag with the clearing. I just put a thing in. Yeah, well, look at this. I got 26. I think the most I can get is one or maybe two more. I'll put both of these in supporters. And I think it's nearly impossible to stop the birds from winning. Man, unless uh, maybe the Vagabond will go and bash them a bunch. So I've got three officer actions. I can definitely get one sympathy down for one victory point. So yeah, let's try that first. I guess I'll try to distract the birds a little bit and go over here and get one. Then for my third action, I'll just defend myself. Ugh. Yeah, so I'm three off. Oh, man. Uh, unless the Vagabot just, like, totally whoops the birds and they literally go into turmoil or destroys a bunch of their roots, I see no way for them not to win. But they are ahead of me in victory points, so he will target them, theoretically. So he's got a bird. There's no crossbow left, so he's not going to do that. So he went to explore, and then quest, and then battle. He's not even going to fight. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be an almost wasted turn for him to explore. The closest one is here, so that's one, two. And then a third to get that. And wow, he wants to quest in a fox clearing, but he only has uh, two things left. So he'll move over to this one and then do nothing. And because he's not injured, he's getting six tokens back. So he would be whooping some bottom if he got another turn, but I don't think he's going to. All right, catch you my last chance to make something happen. Oh, they are going to build that for one victory point. And the only fox clearing they can fight in is here. They do defeat the birds. It's a good start. And they'll fortify their defenses here and here. But the problem is the birds already have, like, a ridiculous force right here that could just easily build a roost there next turn. Uh, by the way, the Marquis is going to build a sawmill there. And score one sad victory point. What a lousy turn. And, yeah, no way we're going to stop him, but let's see how it plays out. Yeah, and this is true in the multiplayer game, too. If you never make the Irie go into turmoil, you just let them build up and build up and build up, and they will certainly win. So they've got so much stuff. They're just going to place four units. At least that helps a little. Two will go over here where they're kind of useless. And the other two down here. And then one of these guys will move. Oh, wow. They uh, really don't have where to go. I guess they'll go here. And then, not that it's going to save us, but three of these guys will run over here. One of these guys will jaunt over here. And one of these guys will come over here because why not? The first battle will be here. Oh, nothing happens. And for Mouse Battle, they're going to have fun over here. Uh, they get uh, just one, because that's not in the lead for their card number. For Bunny Battle, with plus one hit, they're all the way down here. Oh, wow, they'll actually wipe those guys out. Although they didn't get the building to actually build a roost there. But then that's where they'll attack for their free attacks. They would have had two places to build a roost, and that gets them to 29 victory points just from the kill. 
And then, yeah, we had to build this and get six. They got up to 35, way more than they needed. Now, the question is, could I have one on my next turn? I could not have placed any sympathy with these. I didn't have enough cards. Let's see, I didn't have anything I could have built. But I could have gotten two more officers. That would have given me five actions. So I could have gone like one, two, play sympathy, play sympathy. And yeah, that would have gotten me exactly three victory points. So if we just held on against the Irie a little better, I would have won. Or I think if I had defended my bases better, I didn't realize how many supporters you lose. That destroyed me. But there you go, that was Root with the Clockwork expansion and again, a few updates from the Better Bot project. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to hear my thoughts on solo and co-op play using the Clockwork expansion, just click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.